About two weeks ago, I brought you guys some pretty early photos of a tri-fold phone concept from a company called Techno. Before we get into this any further, I'm just going to address this because it always comes up in the comments. People call it a trifold. I know that it has two hinges and that it only folds twice. I tend to agree that that is a weird name for something that folds twice. Tri means three, fold means fold. It should be called a bifold. And I know that trifold wallets exist and they only fold twice. I think that's a weird name too. There's probably some very old historical precedents for why we call them trifolds. I don't care. I'm just going to say what everybody else is saying because it's better for SEO when people search for things. <laughs> They're searching trifold, so I guess that's the word. Multifold would be my preferred term. Anyways, now that that's out of the way, today we actually have real footage of this device. Techno has properly unveiled it, and I thought it would be fun to kind of take a look at this device and talk through some of the specs because it does look very impressive, and it also looks very, very similar to what we think Samsung's multifold device is going to look like. So it might be kind of a little bit of a peek into the future for Samsung users. Now, their video actually starts off with what looks to me to be a 3D render. So I'm just skipping that part and we're jumping ahead to what I believe is an actual phone. Now, keep in mind, this is a concept device, and they've unveiled other concept devices in the past, even tri-folding concept devices. This does not mean that this device is ever going to actually be released to the public, and the specs don't matter a whole lot either because of that. This is more just something that you can look at and say, wow, they've made this thing. This is what is technically possible from this company and therefore from other companies. So when we look at certain things like the camera array, which you can see, you know, really does not stick out very far from this device at all. What you shouldn't say is, wow, their device doesn't have a big camera bump. Why does the Z Fold 7 have a huge camera bump? Well, because we don't know what this camera hardware is, right? This, this could all be like very small sensors and that's why. So don't get too caught up in those little details. But one detail that I think you can get caught up in is just how incredibly, incredibly thin each part of this device actually is. Apparently, each portion of this is only 3.49 millimeters. That would make it far and away the thinnest device around. That's even thinner than the Huawei Mate XT. And when it's closed, let me actually pull up my article to get these numbers Correct. When it is closed, it is 11.49 millimeters, which is definitely a lot thicker than something like the Z Fold 7, but it folds twice when you compare it to the Huawei Mate XT. That was 12.8 millimeters, so it is much thinner than what Huawei actually has produced and released, to be fair. As we play the thing forward, you can see that they've got this sort of like almost two-tone design that I really, really like aesthetically. I think this looks absolutely fantastic. And I do actually think that it's really smart to have your camera bump be horizontal across the top of the device. You guys have seen the stuff with the Fold 7 resting on a table, and because that camera bump is quite tall, it rocks around on that table pretty darn bad. If it's at the top, you're just going to sit at an angle, and it's going to be relatively level. I think that's a better way to go. You can see on the side here, look how tiny that power button and volume rocker is. It is so incredibly skinny and <laughs> narrow that might actually even be a problem. You can also see from this view that this device does have a dedicated cover display because it folds in and then in again, completely sealing that flexible screen inside the device. You have to have a dedicated screen on the outside. Now, and one benefit, there's a couple of benefits there. One, you're keeping that foldable screen quite safe on the inside. And then two, your cover display can be made out of Corning, Gorilla Glass, Victus, or ceramic, or whatever you want to use. And it's going to be much more durable than something like what Huawei is doing, where part of that folding screen is on the outside of the device. It folds in sort of a Z shape or like an accordion type thing. So one uh, hinge goes one way, the other hinge goes the other way. So there's a couple of benefits. If it's there. Now, one downside is that the Huawei device, being that it folds in two different directions, can actually be opened up part of the way or all the way or close. You have three different sort of form factors where this can only really be used on the cover display or fully open. So there's a give and take there. 
Cover display, I think, does look really quite good. Look how thin that bezel is, even on the hinge side. That tends to be like a really big problem area for OEMs, and they don't look like they have much of a problem there at all. Very impressive. Look how far the volume rocker is sticking out, though. That's kind of strange, isn't it? And then just showing this is a real device. Here is somebody actually picking the thing up, and it does look pretty thick in somebody's hand, but not. it doesn't look that crazy to me. Like, it looks... Fairly normal, all things considered. You can see, like I said, though, that one side folds in, other side folds in on top of that, and they're going to hit that power button and turn the screen on, and then they're going to open this thing up, and this is actually really, really cool to see in real time, a device like this being opened up. And, you know, some concerns here. So this side of the screen folds down on top of this just portion of the back of the device. And, you know, I've got to make sure, be careful that no little particulate ends up in there and then gets smushed against the screen. That's really true with all folding devices. But the difference is this is screen on screen, whereas that is screen on back of device. So, you know, are you more likely to have something sort of accidentally stuck to the back of the device? I don't know. Maybe that's something that you just kind of have to figure out when you're testing these sorts of things. But again, open it up twice. And now you have this inner screen, which I believe is just shy of 10 inches. Very, very large, like weirdly large hole punch selfie camera there in the top left hand corner, which is a bit odd. Most companies go on the top right hand. Regardless, it's there. And then looking at the back while this thing is completely open, it really is a very, very strange appearing device with the screen and then the camera and then another portion of the device. Just very odd to look at. You can see here they're going to fire up the camera application and quickly take a photo and then you don't actually get to see the camera app. Maybe that's software not finished or something like that. But then they're going to zoom in. You've got a really large canvas to edit your photos or to zoom in and look at your photos on, which I think is one of the big advantages here of having a nearly 10 inch screen that fits in your pocket. Another thing obviously is going to be watching media. This is not a 16 by 9 screen, but it is a wider aspect ratio than a lot of other folding phones. That's one of the biggest complaints from people is that they buy these folding phones and then they go, man, you know, watching media on something like this, the actual video that's 16 by 9 really doesn't seem any bigger than if I was watching it on something like an S25 Ultra. And that's absolutely true because most folding phones are closer to square and that means that they're not really that great for media consumption. But I think this, by virtue partially of just being as big as it is, it's probably going to be a little bit better here. You can see from this angle just how insanely thin this device is. Now, I do wish that we had a view of the underside, the other side of this device, because I would love to see what that USB-C port looks like, because I'm struggling to imagine how it's even fitting in there at the size that it is apparently, you know, that this device apparently is. But just look at this thing. So they're taking a little bit of time here to just show you more ways where this sort of large screen would be useful. And I think they're also kind of showing you that they do have their own AI stuff. You have to mention AI even in a concept video like this or concept phone video, you're still going to mention AI stuff. But yeah, guys, that looks to be pretty much the end of this a little unveiling video. One more kind of decently close look at this device fully closed. It's just, it's astonishing to me where we have gotten to with some of this technology. Like it's, it's just, it's crazy how impressive this stuff actually is. And the fact is, we're not that far from being able to buy this sort of thing from big companies like Samsung. You know, rumor is their device is going to launch sometime at the end of this year. Honestly, like within just a couple, a few months from right now, just crazy times. One more quick thing that I wanted to mention that I put in the article and I forgot to talk about when I was reacting to the video is that because of the way this thing is designed where it folds in on itself, you have two different hinges that have to be completely different sorts of hinges, right? So one folds inward and it has that sort of water drop design from what they've said. But then the other one has to fit on top of that. So it has to have like a much larger gap for the other third of the phone to fit inside. Like I love thinking about these little engineering challenges of how they manage to put these devices together. And it's gonna be really cool, I think, when a company like Samsung does this because it seems like in the past they've spent more time really sort of talking about that sort of engineering thing. I would love to hear more of that kind of stuff. And I would also love to hear 
from you guys in the comments down below. How impressive does this device look? Seeing it in action in real time, does that make you even more excited for what Samsung has coming down the pike? Let me know in those comments down below. Subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.